As of 2012, babies born in the U.S. have a record high life expectancy of 78.8 years. Meanwhile, the estimated 76 million baby boomers in the U.S. are expected to live longer than previous generations. Here to talk about caring for the aging and aging adults are my guests, Lori Van Tilburg, Executive Director and Founder of the Southern Caregiver Resource Center, serving San Diego and Imperial Counties, and Fritzi Grodeon, Founder of Household Guardians and the author of the book, Grace and Grit, Insights into Real-Life Challenges of Aging for Adult Children and Their Parents. Welcome. Now, Fritzi, what advice would you give to someone who's beginning to suspect that an adult, an aging adult in their family maybe can't live on their own anymore and, and maybe when you should step in? I think you should step in at the time that you first identify what you think is going to be a change. And it can be a gentle, it can be with a first meeting, it can be some recommendations about making their home safer, and an opportunity to talk about all the resources that are available to help the child and the parents. So it sounds like maybe a little bit of graduated uh, intervention, but in your book you point out that one of the first challenges is actually uh, as for a senior living on their own is proximity. Um, what do you recommend as far as dealing with proximity issues? Many seniors would like to remain close to their doctors, close to their friends, and so proximity becomes important, but you also can build a social network if you have to move to another area, closer to your family, and you can get the other social support in different ways. Now, Lori, I've heard you say that the upcoming holidays and holiday season is actually a great time to start talking about or thinking about caregiving. How come the holidays? Well, I think that's a time often when kids come to visit mom and dad and they may see some changes that they hadn't expected. The house may be in disarray. There may be bills out on the table that haven't been paid. They may see that there's some memory problems going on with their parents. And that's a first sign that maybe they need to step in and have a difficult conversation with them. But I think stepping back, even if they come for the holidays and there aren't any signs that there are problems, it's good to get those, you know, conversations out in the open before there's a crisis to talk about, you know, what are your parents' wishes, you know, to bring them into the conversation before, you know, they may just, you know, have memory issues. New no, when mm -hmm. it comes to talking with a, a loved one or even trying to look at the first steps of, of helping someone, what do you do if, if the person has dementia or Alzheimer's? Is, how is that different? At that point, you really need some professional support through other caregivers, I think, to reach out for the family. Um, you need to recognize that there will be opportunities to have certain memories and to be able to work with someone for some very specific times. But I think reaching out and including some professionals with you as you help your family is probably the best. Maybe to like the Alzheimer's <coughs> Association or doctors? Or, um, doctors or even through the Caregiver Coalition. They have lots of resources, different kinds of support people and um, social planners, social workers. Okay, so they, they can come to your organization, yeah, I would like right? To, to echo that, yeah. Southern Caregiver Resource Center really is unique in that the family caregiver is our main client, and so we sit down with the family caregiver and really provide them with an assessment of their needs and what do they need to help take care of their family. And it's, you know, something that is free and it's available to everyone, and so we encourage people to reach out and that they don't have to be alone to do that. And many of our families have been with us for 20, 25 years, you know, if you're caring for somebody with a traumatic brain injury. But we're there for the full lifelong journey of caregiving. And so definitely reach out for help because there's help out there and you may feel overwhelmed and isolated and not know what to do. How long is the wait if you did go to the uh, Caregivers uh, Resource Center? Is there a long wait list? No, not really at all. I mean, when you call in, you'll be able to talk to our intake coordinator, Amanda, and she'll take some basic information and then refer you to one of our family consultants that are all trained clinicians and they usually will be able to meet with you in the next week or two and they can come to your house and do a home assessment look at the environment there look at the needs of your loved one they can also come to our office and do an assessment there but the nice thing is is that we're really there throughout the journey as I said and we're there to coach them through the problems and to how you know how to have those difficult conversations with their parents you know you touched on something people often feel alone when they're trying to care for their aging parents or people in their family do you see the sort of loneliness or, or isolation in, in dealing with this? Do you see that changing? 
You know, I would like to say that I do. However, even though caregiving is becoming more the norm now, families still think it's really their job to take care of their parents or their husband or their wife, and they don't see themselves as caregivers. And so sometimes they don't even think to reach out for help and support because it's not their needs that they're focusing on. They're focusing on the loved one. Uh, and uh, so they are isolated. All right. Well, uh, Lori Van Tilburg and uh, Fritzi Grodet, um, thank you so much for this. And we have a lot more information about the Resource Center and other resources on our website, kpbs.org. Thank you. Great. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much.